Welcome to Love More Life, where we help you create a life you want, a life you love. I'm Sifu Marcus Lovemore, and today we're going to be talking about suffering and pain. Suffering and pain and the difference between the two, and more to the point, the gap in between your choice between suffering and pain. Now, most people, when you start talking about this, they go, whoa, 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 whoa. Those two things are the same thing, suffering, pain. Well, in my growth, in my experience, that is absolutely not true. And to move out of that cycle, to move into the cycle of joy and love, you really do need to uh, understand the difference between the two. So, before I get into that, what I want to do is I want to read a beautiful quote by Viktor Frankl. He's an amazing author and a Holocaust survivor. Um, and it really kind of perfectly illustrates what I'm talking about here. So, between stimulus and response, there is a space. In that space is our power to choose our response. In our response lies our growth and our freedom. Okay? Between stimulus and response, there is a space. In that space is our power to choose our response. In our response lies our growth and freedom. So, do you get what that's talking about? That's talking about the, the decision in between the thing that happens to you and how you decide to react to it. There's actually a choice going on there, and it happens so quickly and so fast, most people don't any see, even see it. And the one that I want to really deal with is the negative action that's related to your negative choice. So what, what, what we're talking about. We're talking about something bad happens to you. We're talking about something uh, unpleasant happens to you. You feel bad. It could be anything from bumping your knee to a car accident to a loved one dying. The spectrum of discomfort that we all experience happens to us all. So what happens after that? What happens after that? You are in pain. You are in that pain. What do you do with that pain? So what that also reminds me of is a Buddhist proverb. And you've probably heard it before, and it's a great one. It's almost like how, if you want to sum up Buddhism, you could almost put it all into this one little quote. Pain is inevitable. Pain is inevitable. Suffering is an option. Pain is inevitable, suffering is option. It so gets what I'm trying to talk to you about here, is that pain and suffering are two different things. So the question comes up, uh, you're wrong. That's what most people say. Pain, suffering, bad things, that's impossible to separate out those two things. Okay? It's impossible. But this is what I've learned. This is what I figured out. Or at least was presented to me. When I was in the hospital, when I was ex in excruciating pain, right? And I felt that I truly didn't deserve this pain that was happening to me. That it came out of nowhere. I had some options there. I didn't know I had options, but at the time I did have options. But what came to me in this kind of point, this low point, is that how come I'm in pain, and yet I've seen other people who are in pain enjoy that? Why am I in pain, and what is the difference? Let's put it this way. I know some people who get tattoos. Lots of tattoos on all of them. In fact, they're almost, there's more tattoo on them than there is open skin. And when I ask them, well, isn't that like a needle poking you like a thousand times per tattoo? Maybe hundreds of thousands of times? They go, yeah. And some of the places, like on your shin, on your face, on your groin, doesn't that kind of hurt? They go, yeah. And I was remembering this time, and this is what really hit me in the hospital, is that why, when they said it hurt, they also would always add, yeah, but it feels really good. In fact, it was an enlightening experience. In fact, I really enjoy it. That's why I get so many of them. And I just really couldn't wrap my mind around it. 
I'm like, what the hell? Because personally, I don't like needles in me. In fact, I've had enough needles poked into me. I'm done. So how could they experience the same pain that I was experiencing and still experience some sort of joy and love out of it? And even euphoria. Now, some people, say it, some people say it might be a biochemical thing, but that euphoria moves on. It, the memory of it moves on. In fact, when you talk to them about it, they talk in reverence of this pain, that the pain is good. How do they do that? How do they do that? And in the hospital, I was like, how do I learn how to do that? Because I'm in pain right now. How am I learning? How can, how can I not? Because I was feeling like, this pain seemed to be everlasting. It would travel with me. And that's when we come back to this Buddhist quote. That pain is inevitable. Suffering is an option. That when I really started looking at it, and in that place of extreme pain and devoid of any other distractions, I found out that there was a gap of time. There was a small amount of choice a space in between the pain and the suffering where I actually made up my mind consciously unconsciously it was still a choice that I was making to make that suffering happen so then the question comes up what is the difference exactly because they feel so much so identical to each other what's the difference between the pain the suffering the suffering the pain well, here, this is what you want to try and wrap your mind around. If you think about pain as a momentary action, something that happens, and it's connected to the moment, and in that moment, that moment comes and goes, it expands and contracts, it, it, it births itself and then it dies. Every moment is like that, like a little universe exploding and contracting every moment. Well, pain is like that because it's linked to that moment. The pain explodes and then contracts back down to nothing. So what, what is still there? What are you still feeling within that nothing? That's the space I'm talking about. The nothing that occurs after the pain. It happens in an instant. Boom! The car crash, the hurt knee, the death, the, the onslaught to your psyche creates the reaction. Just as if somebody slapped you in the back really hard. It hurts, but then it subsides. So why does it linger? Why does the, the trauma linger, the, the suffering linger? It's because at some point between the pain and what happened after that, you decided, I decided, back when I was doing this, to attach to something. Something that I thought was normal or logical or even useful. Because sometimes that memory of that suffering or that memory of that pain would in your mind would prevent you from having other pain. But yet, it's you holding on to it, that grasping, that resistance of letting go. The natural order is to birth and die, to expand and contract. Because you're holding on to that pain, because you're holding on to that memory of the pain, which is generated by you, for you, for your own means, it stays around because you're holding on to it. And the longer you hold on to it, the tighter you have to grip it. The tighter you have to grip it, the more suffering it creates. Because at the end of the day, all suffering is, is the resistance of what is. Because what is, is glorious. Now, of course, that sounds a little bit hokey. I get that. But here's the deal. When you start realizing that there is a space, that awareness, and that's all I want to get you to today, is the awareness or even contemplating that there may be a space in between pain and suffering, between your, the action and your response. Just to realize that, once that awareness starts to happen, you will see that the awareness of that gap of time will expand. Because this kind of reminds me of a story of when I was a... Uh, I used to train with some high elite athletes, and a lot of the major league guys would like to come train martial arts, so I'd train them in knife and things like that. And so I'd always ask them, you know, how the hell do you hit these fastballs? Because I tried once, one of these like fastball pitchers pitched me a ball, and it basically felt like the ball teleported from the pitcher 
all the way to the catcher. Like, I was sitting there going, okay, I'm good. I'm a martial artist. I got keen, honed uh, reflexes. I'm going to hit the fuck out of this ball. And then I see him move, and then, foomp, it's there. Again, foomp, before I even could twitch, the ball had hit the catcher. Boom, done. I was like, that's like freaking impossible. That's like, that's like hitting a bullet coming out of a gun. That's how I felt. So I'd ask these guys, these major leaguers, how do you do that? How, how is that possible? And they'd say, well, after you practice a long time and you focus with enough intent, you actually start to see the ball. And then at, the, at that point, you really can't hit it anywhere. But eventually, you start seeing it so clearly that space of time starts elongating that, what, 0.7 seconds get so long in your perception because you're so aware of it you actually see the stitches in the ball and through that you see which way it's rotating and then instead of just hitting it you're able to hit it over there hit it over there you actually control the hit well this is what I want you to try and get with your consciousness right now it's like a fastball being thrown at you it almost seems instantaneous but if you concentrate if you open your awareness to it if you focus your intent, eventually that space of time between the action, right, and the response will get wider and wider until it becomes a breath of time where you will truly have the awareness to make a decision, to make a decision about what you want to do instead of just reacting like somebody slapping you on the back and you're going, ah, you could take a breath. You could decide to do something else. In fact, what you could decide to do is a say, you know what, I don't want to react in these negative ways anymore because they hurt me more than they hurt anybody else. Or they don't help anybody else and they only hurt me. So what happens is you start taking these things off the table. The suffering, the anger, the guilt, the, the, these, these emotions that, that necessarily don't enlighten you and expand you. They contract you. They constrict your soul, right? So you decide to start opening your soul even though you're having pain because that's your decision. So you start taking some of those things off the table or at least you experience them in a different way. Then what happens? What happens? What's left on your emotional terrain? What do you have left to experience? Well, if you start moving through um, anger, guilt, self-pity, envy, all of these kind of emotions, these very constricting emotions, what do you think's left? Well, the short answer is joy and love. Now, once again, we're getting all foo-foo about that, but think about it. That's what's left. When you, when you eliminate all of these things that are constricting and you start expanding your consciousness, you're always open to the, your environment. What the first thing that happens is something happens to your consciousness. Instead of being hyper-focused on what you're feeling and how it's hurting you and how the world is on top of you, you start actually opening up to your environment and start to notice, and this is what actually happened to me, and this was the first step in my journey onward, is you start noticing the subtle and infinite miracles that are happening everywhere that are trying to help you on your journey because you're open to them. Prior to that, because you were so self-focused, you couldn't see that miracle that was right in front of your face. So that first step, that step of seeing those miracles, becoming aware of them, opens you up even more. And it opens up your consciousness to the awareness to receive those miracles. So what does that do? It creates a state of joy. It create a, creates a state of happiness, a contentment in you. Because when you see miracles everywhere, you see that the universe is working on your side. It's helping you out. It's not against you. It's actually trying to help you, except you were just ignoring it. That's another definition of suffering. So, what happens then? One could argue that through this, you actually see God. You hear God's song out there, and then eventually in here, because you're open to it. And that's the only way. If you're not listening, you can't hear it. Now, of course, that's a, harder, that's a harder subject to breach because you bring up the God word has so much 
tension and heaviness to it. So let's talk about something that's easier to talk about that everybody will agree upon. Whether you believe in God, you don't believe in God, whatever your theory is. But everybody, I think, wants to have joy. Right? Joy and love and love life. I think you can't really argue with that one. Well, at least doing this makes you open to that. Open to the joy and love that you may be missing that may help you out in this journey. So, this is what I want you to see. What I want you to at least contemplate that in this space there's a choice, right? And in that space you can choose to do what you want to do. Now of course I'm going to read this uh, I'm going to read this this uh, quote one more time and I really do think it's it's almost a quote you can live by, right? Between stimulus and response there is a space. In that space is our power to choose our response. In our response lies our freedom. And that's really what I'm really talking about here is that when you see that space and you start commanding it, but first that awareness, just the awareness of that space gives you the option of freedom. Because with that freedom, with that choice, you unshackle yourself from the bondage of your own suffering. And that's really what I want to give away right now, is the ability to do that, because I see that everywhere. Is Everyone is bonded to their own suffering, one way or another. Through this awareness, you can unshackle yourself and wander free in that life so that you have the choice now to become the person you know you could be, the person you want to be, the person you always could be, the person you love, the person who receives love. And so this is what that's all about. Okay? That's what this is all about. Between stimulus and response, there's a space. In that space is our power to choose our response. In our response lies our growth and our freedom. And to do that, it takes awareness. And hopefully I've given you some of that today. Uh, this is Lovemore Life. I'm Sifu Marcus Lovemore. Thank you for coming by and checking this out. If you want to go to my blog and write comments either here at at uh, lovemorelife.com or go to my blog unreasonablehappinessonline.com please leave comments I'd love to hear what you have or any some show ideas that you'd like me to talk about or some of my stuff um, thank you very much uh, see you again goodbye <laughs>